intention what is your intention it is my intention to experience what intention is an inner experience to experience what to experience joy to experience bliss to experience abundance I, I want to feel that everything is taken care of that was my thing you see because I came from a background where I was running around a lot I was broke busted and disgusted I was helping everybody else I was putting out fires I was being run on adrenaline I was actually addicted to adrenaline in my body and then I had a crushing soul crushing or maybe a soul opening depression and the depression was so deep and I could not shake it and me a naturally energetic person a person that loves to go here there everywhere a social butterfly loves to be alive and I'm butterfly butterfly is my totem me the butterfly was laying in the bed listless could barely move and it wasn't relaxation it was no energy one of the hallmarks of, of depression, no energy. So I wasn't tapped in to the bzzz like I am now. And so there I lie contemplating my life and the voice said, get up. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God, get up. I was about to take myself out with a bottle of pills. As a matter of fact, I had gone into the medicine cabinet in my bathroom, opened the medicine cabinet, pulled out the 800 Motrin that they had given me. I loved that Valerie of yesterday when I was 30. They had given me for the baby that I had just birthed and I had an episiotomy and I pushed her out, natural childbirth, no drugs. That Valerie was a trooper because I went, I reached for the Motrin and I didn't say, I'm gonna off myself, I didn't say that. I said, how many would it take for me just to go to sleep and not wake up. I just wanted an eternal nap. Like I was in the bed all the time. How can I just stay in the bed? And when I reached for the Motrin, my own thought frightened me. It brought me back from the edge and I thought, <gasps> what about my children? Like, what about my babies? I had a three-year-old at the time and a baby. What about my children? And I came back from the edge and I've never been at that age since. And the next day the voice saw, after I had made the choice to live, I said, I don't even know what it means. I've been in the cult of Jehovah's Witnesses for 26 years. I don't really even know what it means to live. I don't know what it means to have skin on my legs from, uh, 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 air on my skin on my legs from a miniskirt. Like, what is it like to really live? And I said, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna live. I made the choice to live. And because I made the choice to live, the universe, always ready, eager, waiting for our next delicious decision, it said yes. So the next morning or thereabouts, I don't remember if it was the next morning or a day or two, week, I don't know. All I can say is the universe responded. And I'm in the bed, laying in the bed, contemplating my life and how to get free of the husband that I didn't want anymore. I did it because they told me that's what I was supposed to do. The house I didn't want anymore. You know, I was supposed to get married. I was supposed to have a house. I was supposed to have two children. Why well, I did all that, I'm still not happy. I'm supposed to follow every rule of the religion. I did all that, I'm still not happy. Boy said, get up. Now that right there was a gargantuan task for a person that's used to staying in a bed. I got up. I was nursing my baby. Good thing I was nursing her because I don't know how, if I would even have the strength to make bottles. Get up. It said, get dressed. I was like, Ugh. Like these commands sounded like climb Mount Everest. Get dressed sounded like climb Mount Everest. Ugh. That means shower. Yeah. How do you smell? You're probably funky as I don't know what. You've been laying in this bed. You try to avoid showers and water and anything that would, you got the blinds closed. You don't want any light coming in, no elements, no light, no air, no fire, no water. You want to die. Get up. Energize yourself. Get in the water. I got in the bathtub. Whew. I got dressed. It said, go outside. I was like, oh, Lord, outside. Good thing no one was around. And the voice was speaking in commands just like this because I swear to, I swear to you, and I don't even swear, I promise you, if it had put more than two of these commands together, it would have lost me. It gave me one at a time. If it had strong, even two, would get up and go get dressed. I'd be like, okay, tomorrow. <laughs> but it was so affirming. And it was so the right thing to do. And it was so, yes. It was so 
Yes. I get up. I get dressed. I'm just following. Word by word. It says, go outside. <gasps> outside? Like where the sun is? But by then I was kind of in a current, like in a flow, like a, a zombie. Go outside. Something bigger than me had taken over. And I let it. Because I really didn't have the will to fight anymore. I couldn't. I, I had lost all my will, my resistance. All I just lost it. I was like putty. He said, go outside. I went outside. Sun like a vampire. I get outside. I stepped down the steps of my front of my townhouse. We were living in a townhouse at the time in Restorstown, Maryland. I stepped down the steps, and it said walk. And I started walking. And then it said breathe. And I said. And then it said look up. And I looked up at the bright blue sky over my head. And I just knew in that moment there was so much to live for. I just knew in that moment it was so much to live for. And that's how I had my soul opening. And that was mm, soon be 30 years ago. And all I can tell you is that these three freaking decades have been filled with all kinds of learning, growth, discovery, not knowing what I'm doing, taking one step after the other, building, writing, caring, sharing, living, loving. And that's how I find myself right here right now, which is particularly astounding to me. Because if you had said to me, you're going to have a YouTube channel, what's that? You're going to be the, the headmistress of a school of Christian witchcraft, what's that? Uh, what are you smoking? Uh, no. You're going to be speaking all over the world. I kind of had an inkling about that one. You're going to be writing books that are read by millions and billions of people and bought and read by millions and billions of people. And millions and billions of people are going to experience incredible, are experiencing incredible, incredible transformation from your millions and billions of books. Wow. I kind of had an inkling about that one too. So what was my intention? My intention was number one, to live. My intention was joy because I had been incomplete, not joy. My intention was joy. My intention was true. Holy Spirit, God, I don't know if anything's true. I've been in the cult for 26 years. I don't know if Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior. I don't know. I'm going to take apart my entire belief house brick by brick. I'm going to take apart my entire belief house brick by brick. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go with one thing that I know is true. God is love. I don't know anything else. I don't know anything else. God is love. I'm going to go with that. I'm going to hold on to that. I don't know anything else. And so it took me to the next book, and the next teacher, and the next workshop, and the next epiphany, and the next revelation. Oh, I had become Mr. Frodo. Oh, I was on my hero's quest. Thank you so very much, Dr. Joseph Campbell. Oh, yes, I was Dorothy. After having come out of the tornado of my life, I had landed in Oz. And I was about to get my helpers and my magical implements and all the wisdom that I needed to clip my heels three times and go home and all the delicious lessons that come with it. Oh, yes. 